Uh, hello, students. We warmly welcome you to the first session of uh, AppShare IADT virtual internship program in full stack development with our uh, industry partner Blackbuds. So, this uh, collaboration with AppShare IADT aims to provide a practical experience to complement theoretical knowledge. So, with this program, we encourage every intern to be active and attentive during the training program, where the project oriented training will be given you the industry approach on full stack development. So we wish you the best in this program and we look forward to see you excel in your internship. We wish you all the best in your future and yours. And I would uh, uh, also introduce uh, Anuradha Tota, who is the CEO and founder of Blackbugs. So to give a brief intro about this internship. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, students, uh, good evening. And uh, more than finding out problems with somebody who was already trying to find problems with instructors. The main motive for, uh, for all of you to join here is for you to learn, not for you to find out mistakes. Okay, so with that intention, you will have to start off. So this is, uh, uh, I will have to explain to you, uh, probably some of you students already might know us. Um, International Institute of Digital Technologies is the government of Department of ITES, um, Government uh, Institute and uh, Blackbox is official partner, academic partner of uh, IADT. Uh, on behalf of IADT and Blackbox, I welcome you all for a great and uh, in-depth learning of all the concepts, okay? So as I already told you, the learning in software is quite different from arts and liberal arts, like management, it is different. Technology is different. The learning is more based on how much you practice and not on the faculty. It is not dependent on faculty, though you will get best people, industry, head for AIML and industry head for a very big organization will be teaching you AI and ML. And at the same time, even full stack, one uh, sir, the sir who is going to teach you today is also a person who is a CTO of a big organization, chief technology officer of a big organization. So these kind of people will teach you. And then again, you will have mentors. Each one of you will be getting a mentor. They'll make a group and give you a mentor. And the mentor will help you complete a project. Here is where you will have to understand the greatness of this program. Because most of your friends might have joined some other programs. Those are recorded programs. Nobody will make you complete a project. Nobody will explain to you if you have a doubt. But here is a program. If you do your best, then you will need, not need any other program. I know there will be uh, programs 30,000 worth, 40,000 worth programs which students like you do after they pass and go to Hyderabad. So I mean, currently in Hyderabad. So uh, people who go and do 30,000, 40,000 programs is not needed if you do this program very well, because you have mentors, you have world-class instructors, you have a learning management system, then you have regular assessments. And then you also have, uh, somebody will take you through the portal. You will also have a place where you can apply for jobs. So this is all in one. If you are just want to slip down, slip off a call class, you don't want to come to a class, then who can help you? If you are not able to complete a test, who can help you? So it depends on how much you do. And but for a, that is for learning part. But there is also this part where you'll have to submit a record to the college. For this part also, the team has arranged the portal so effectively that it will automatically capture your everyday learnings. Over and above, you can make your own comments, but every day, even that writing the log also, the portal will capture. So your mentors will be help, uh, helping you in every step. This is one of the best programs. So if you see all the other programs you might, your friends might have joined their recorded sessions. Nobody is to help. Nobody will make them do practicals. Nobody will make them do a project. So this is where you can learn your best. So I, I request you, all of you, uh, so voice not audible. So there are so 
uh, at least more than thousand people listening. If voice is not audible, then it is your issue. Okay. If uh, every time, every day, students type this, they will type uh, or voice not audible, but that is your issue because thousand other people are hearing. Okay. So just check your setup when um, you are coming to this session. Have your laptop, have your uh, uh, things ready to work on, have a notebook, have a pencil, pen or something like that. So have everything ready for your learning when you are attending this session. Okay. Uh, so there are uh, questions here. Uh, audible? Okay, thank you. There are questions here. Uh, Manaswini, can you read the questions? Uh, uh, we can answer the questions. LinkedIn ID we make with you, collaboration we make. No? Okay. Okay, students, uh, have a great uh, learning uh, from today onwards. It is almost three to four months that you will have to learn. We'll all travel together and we'll, we'll all, uh, you are instructors and you'll almost become uh, friends by the end of four months. Four months is quite a long time. And make the best of this. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Anuradha Tota, MD and CEO of Black Books. And uh, all the best to all of you. There will be WhatsApp groups. There will be discussion forums. Everywhere, I'll also be there. In case there is any issue, you can talk to us. You can talk to mentors. You can talk to sirs. There will be program management group and uh, support group. You can talk to anybody and tell your issues if there are any issues. Um, all the best to your learning. And uh, have a great day today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for your speech, ma'am. So here I would like to introduce Dinesh, uh, sir, who is the program director of IADT, International Institute of Digital Technologies, who will be help, uh, taking care of this internship program throughout the internship program. And he'll be letting us know what will be the uh, curriculum and the schedule of this program and all. So Dinesh, sir, I would like to ask a few, speak few words about this internship. Hello. Good evening, all. Uh, welcome to IADT uh, virtual internship program. And I am Dinesh, uh, general manager and prog program manager of this program, uh, IADT. And uh, uh, thank you, students who had shown interest to our, uh, our virtual internship program, uh, which is associated with the Black Bug and uh, uh, Apshi. And uh, around 5,000 students plus have registered today with IADT for this virtual internship program. And we are very happy of this. And uh, this is a peculiar program when you compare to other uh, 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 internship providers. We are only the provider who are giving the live sessions to the students and also tracking every student in the way of mentoring or in the way of WhatsApp and uh, I hope uh, most of you have been traveling with us from last one month, how we have been interacting with you, whether it may be WhatsApp, email, or over call. That uh, that shows what we take care of, of the student, how and how we care the student. And maybe in some places uh, we have uh, not responded, but 99% uh, uh, all the students have been interacted with our team, IADT team whether it may be in uh, registration or payment or uh, whatever it is. Thank you all. And this is a program of uh, 240 hours in a span of uh, 12 to 16 weeks as per the guidelines of the university and uh, APSHI, we will be doing it. And we will do it as per the requirement of the student also. And we will follow the rules as per the government universities. Students, you are requested to join this group uh, classes without fail and your uh, tracking of attendance will be done from the our team and in between you have any 
difficulties in listening the class and other things you kindly do not hesitate to reach out to us you reach to us in a whatsapp or in the chat box we we help you everywhere and whenever it is required uh, you you will also have your college mentors if required they will be there and uh, we will help you all the time and uh, you could join the classes as per the schedule given hopefully um, wednesday friday uh, we will be having this full stack development classes and it will carry till the uh, march end and in between uh, three live sessions you will be having the other uh, programs of uh, self paced videos and assessments and project management uh, projects given to you where you need to attend it okay thank you all and uh, uh, manaswini uh, can we have the instructor uh, to introduce himself and do it yes sir yes sir uh, so i would like to introduce uh, our fst instructor who is akib akib is a technology enthusiast and currently works as a uh, chief technology officer at unboxing art an uh, art centric learning platform he has taken corporate training sessions for companies like ola and innovaser etc and also conducted several offline boot camps in prestigious universities including iit jammu and kanchipuram university overall he has mentored more over 3 lakh students in full stack development with some of uh, the leading edutech brands worldwide so i would uh, request akib to take over the session for today and uh, make the learning more interactive for the students oh yes thank you so much there is one lady right. raising hand what is the issue can you post it in the chat box Uh, great yes um hi guys good evening uh, if you are able to see me uh, hear me and also see the screen hopefully uh, just put a hi or good evening in the chat so that we know the setup is fine and we can get started okay perfect great um so yes uh, let me quickly you know introduce uh, myself also uh, quickly but uh i'll also quickly walk you through the agenda and how things are going to work uh, in the internship overall so that you know you get a good understanding of what to expect uh, especially the live session part and what are we going to learn and uh, what you need to do in the session and what i will be doing in the session so we'll discuss all of that quickly and then we'll jump um, you know into the topic or the agenda for today so uh if i have to quickly walk you through the agenda so this is uh, what we will do or i will share in the beginning of every session uh, which is the agenda of the session and there will be three to four learning points um, you know meant for a particular session the sessions will be one and a half hours long uh, monday wednesday friday right so 6 to 7:30 pm uh, on mondays wednesdays and fridays we have three sessions every week which are one and a half hour long right so like um, ma'am and sir already said it is it would be great if all of you attend the sessions regularly uh, because the sessions will be linked to each other right so obviously it's one language or one technology overall so whatever we learn in this session will be required a uh, prerequisite for the next session right and they will be linked in the sense that unless we learn one language we cannot learn the other thing so uh naturally it is important that you attend these sessions uh, on a regular basis and you know try not to miss any session uh, in addition to the sessions or the con content in the session we'll also have poll questions which are quiz questions uh, which again we'll see a sample of towards the end today and uh, we'll also make lots of mini projects throughout the live sessions so these mini projects are where you need to be um, active with your laptops during the session itself right so whenever we learn a new technology like let's say for example we are learning html uh, what we will do towards the end is we'll do one challenge so last 10 15 minutes of every session will be a challenge based on what we have learned in that session so we'll try to create some mini projects some output um, you know so that we can recap our learning of the day and that way we'll uh, proceed so this will be a very hands on a project driven approach wherein we'll make lots of different things um throughout this journey of full stack right uh, another thing is that as of now in the very first session i am assuming that you have no um like 
no expertise in the subject you might know basic computer science or you might not uh, you might know the fundamentals or you might not so i am assuming at this point that we are starting from the very basics right so you don't uh, even need to know what a website is that is where we'll start from so in the session today uh, we will talk about what a website is the process that we follow to create it and all of those things right so the idea is to keep it very um, you know hands on and start from the very basics that is why the duration is also longer because we have so many things to discuss but we are starting from scratch so hopefully that way all of you will be able to follow along and that is how we'll proceed so like i said we are going to have three sessions every week that's monday wednesday friday 6 pm to 7 30 pm right so one and a half hours on uh, three days so that is the live session duration in addition to this, of course, you will have assignments and other material on the LMS, uh, which you have to go through projects to complete, quizzes to do. All of those things will be in addition to the live duration. So roughly 4.5 to 5 hours of live every week. Uh, that is what we're going to have. Right. Uh, now, quickly coming to how this works in the session here. So since we have so many people in the session, it is naturally not possible uh, to give mic access to everybody or, you know, um, ask answer questions that way. So what we'll do is you can put any questions that you have in the chat, right? So no matter if you're here or watching it on um, a live, you can put your answers in the chat and we have, um, you know, members of the team who will be reading those questions out and then we'll answer all of those questions uh, in designated time stamps. So basically after every topic, we'll have a quick Q&A, a five minute Q&A for that topic. So whatever questions you have, even during the topic, what you can do is you can just uh, put a message in, th in the chat and during that designated Q&A slot, you will see a slide for Q&A on the screen. So as soon as that comes up, you can put your questions here or like whichever chat you are on uh, here or on Zoom or YouTube, whatever it is, um, you can put your questions in the chat and we'll answer them um, in the designated Q&A slot, right? So yes, um, that... Uh, hopefully those instructions are clear. Um, just put a yes or clear in the chat if all of this is clear and let's get started. All right, perfect. So like, um, you know, ma'am and sir also said, this requires a very, um, you know, very interactive approach from your side also, right? So uh, it is important that you respond naturally, which most of you are responding. Thank you for that. But uh, even for people who are, you know, just uh, here, uh, who might have not replied in the chat so far, uh, please understand that this sessions or this entire program is um, going to be successful for you only if you interact, right? So it is really important that you take the opportunity to talk, ask questions and clear your doubts, uh, whatever you might have. We have a lot of things in place, like, you know, already mentioned, we have support groups and WhatsApp groups and LMS and discussion forums and live sessions. There are so many places for you to clear your doubts or queries. So yes, it is really important that you utilize them to the best uh, extent possible and um, you know uh, make the most of this training. So yes, with that, uh, let's jump into the first topic. Um, so today we are going to talk about full stack fundamentals. And this session is basically just going to set a context of what is going to come next. Right. So um, this will give you a broad picture of the steps we follow for development, some basic terms, um, you know, that is that are used for web development, like what is full stack? What is a stack right? front end, back end? What are these terms? What do they mean? Uh, we look at different components of a website. We look at the steps we follow for creating a website. And at the end, I'll tell you what are the tools that you need to download or install? What setup do you need to do? Uh, before we start coding from the next session, right? So that's what we'll discuss at the end. We'll talk about the tools you need, all the different things uh, that you need to install and set up before we progress, right? Or before we can proceed. So uh, before we jump into the topic, uh, here's a quick introduction to myself. Um, Manaswini did introduce me, but still. Um, so I've completed my MTech from VIT, that is uh, in, you know, um, Vellore in Tamil Nadu, of course. And um, I've been training ever since I was in college. So I've started training in 2016 in my third year in college and I've been training ever since then. So it's been six, seven years now that I've been training. 
um in terms of corporate training i have taken a lot of uh, corporate sessions for companies like ola and innovacer uh, among other places and of course i have also taken uh, on campus boot camps in, in iit jammu um kanchipuram university uh, among other places right and i have also uh, been to dubai for a 3 month training program around the same time last year so january last year um you know i was in dubai for a 3 year 3 month training that was also for um, full stack right so yes i have been um, you know training for a couple of years now so i know what to expect i know uh, what uh, are the latest technologies that we are using in the industry and that is what we are going to discuss uh, in terms of work i handle all the tech at unboxing art so i am the cto the chief technological officer there of course there's a team that i work with and i manage the entire it side of things or the tech side of things over there so yes we have uh, you know like website there's admin panel learning application um back end admin panel sales teams application we have five six different products um that i take care of on a daily basis right so yes that is basically what i do i um, teach uh, i code and i teach how to code that's practically what i do uh, on a daily basis right so yes um with that let's jump into the first uh, major topic of the day. these are some of the places that i have been to uh, for training right or some of the organizations that i have been training with so yes uh, like i said it's been a few years uh, that i am doing this and yes hopefully uh, you know um, we'll have a great learning experience together for the next couple of weeks uh, also like i said so i just saw like one person raise their hand Uh, like i said if you have any doubts please put them in the chat so that way it will be easier for us to answer them and you know it will not be missed out so make sure you put all your questions or queries in the chat right uh, so here's the first part now this is something we'll do in the beginning of every session and this will help you with your logic building you know or problem solving skills uh, one of the things that i've noticed a lot when we are talking about you know uh, let's say um, joining the industry or post college Uh, one of the things that a lot of people um, you know struggle with that i have seen in my experience i also struggled with this in college you know is uh, basically um understanding how to think or when you are given a problem understanding how to solve that problem right so that is the first thing that i have for you uh, i call it think it through it's a segment that we'll have at the beginning of every session Uh, mostly going forward so uh, what you need to do very simple i'll give you one minute you can read the question on the screen and just put your answer in the chat these are not technical questions these are not multiple style choices questions these are none of those they are purely logical questions right so it could be anything it could be any real world item any real world object anything in the real world so uh, just jog your memories read the question i'll give you one minute and then i'll tell you the answer of course uh, so i'll give you one minute to put what you think is the correct answer in the chat and then we'll discuss what the correct answer is so yes i'll give you a couple of um, like i'll give you a few seconds to think about this the question is on the screen read this put your answer in the chat and then we'll discuss what the correct answer can be okay and the time is up so let's see what answers are there in the chat and then i'll tell you what the correct answer is so we have air uh, no air cannot be the correct answer uh, because of course air cannot speak or hear so air is not the correct answer a uh, voice assistant again they don't there is nothing with the wind nothing connected with the wind in the case of a voice assistant um sound again not the correct answer food um website thought no a uh, great so there are a lot of responses but most of you have also given the correct response the correct answer to this is an echo 
right echo is basically you know the response we hear back from mountains so let's say that you go to a top of the mountain and you shout something out loud you hear the same thing being repeated back to you that is what an echo is right so that is the correct answer for this one it speaks without a mouth because it comes from the mountain and again hears without ears because it is a mountain uh, there is no body and it will only work if there is wind flowing so if there is no wind you will not hear anything back right so the correct answer here is an echo perfect here's the next question so again i'll give you one minute uh, only you can read it in this on the screen and respond in the chat Perfect. So most of you have gotten this right. The correct answer is breath, right? Breath is uh, something that you cannot hold for more than a minute. At best, maybe one and a half, two minutes at best. If you are a trained Olympic swimmer, maybe about two minutes. But other than that, you know, no matter how strong you are, you cannot hold uh, breath for more than a minute. So yes, breath or air could be, but breath is the exact, uh, exactly the right answer here. Well done. Perfect. Um, here is the next one. So the final question for today. Now, this one is not very serious. It's actually um, a joke, uh, to be very honest. But yes, uh, you can give this a try. So again, I'll give you one minute, read this on the screen and let you let me know what the answer you think is in the chat. Okay, so we have a couple of answers in the chat. Let's check um, Titanic. Okay, uh, no, Titanic is not the correct answer. Jealous, again, is not the correct answer. Uh, boats are different. No, uh, it is the same boat. So not really. And yes, so some of you have got it right. The correct answer is all of them are married. Right. So like I said, this is not exactly a lot. It is logical, but yes, it was more of uh, a joke in that sense but yes so you see a boat filled with people it has not sunk but when you look again you don't see a single person on the boat so the reason why you don't see a single person is because all of them are married right or all of them are in a relationship basically so uh, the reason for putting this question is is also to let you know that in technical interviews in hr interviews uh, you might face such questions right so you will be given when you're talking to the hr or talking to the technical person they might give you some scenario, you know, let's say you throw eggs from a window or you do this, uh, it's a vacuum and you throw a stone and a paper at the same time, which one will reach the reach fastest. You will, you can expect these kind of questions in interviews. This is one of those questions where we try to, you know, start thinking about it so technically or so logically, but the correct answer actually is really simple and probably the first thing that you come up with. So yes, these kind of questions are designed to test um, how much you trust your own thinking, you know, and um, how quickly can you respond. So yes, um, I hope these questions were useful. Uh, we'll have more questions, like I said, uh, mostly three questions every session um, in the beginning. Great. Now, uh, with that done, let's quickly jump into the agenda or the first topic uh, of the session. So again, you need to help me out here. Um, I'll tell you a word and what you need to do is in the chat, quickly tell me how will you explain that to a five-year-old kid? Right? Let us assume that you're talking to a five-year-old kid uh, who obviously has no idea what the entire thing is about or what the meaning is and they cannot understand anything technical, right? So then you need to use as simple a language as possible, right? As simple a language as possible. So here is the first term. Uh, how do you explain the term website to a five-year-old kid? 
there's no time limit for this. You can immediately start answering. It's a very simple question. Imagine you're talking to a five-year-old kid, right? And they're asking you, what is this website? How do you explain that to a five-year-old? So naturally, you cannot use any technical jargon. You cannot use any formal terms, right? In plain, simple English, how do you explain what a website is uh, to a five-year-old? So again, you can just put your answers in the chat. And uh, yeah, let's see what people come up with. Okay, you can see cartoons here. Okay, nice. Um, information, pages, uh, compare with real life example. Okay, collection of web pages. True, but then again, what is a web page? So when you say collection of web pages, they will not understand what a web page is, right? So that is not um, exactly accurate. Um, it's a tool which gives you related info. Okay, collection of pages, collection of pages. It's a place where we can find what we want. Um, combination of links, images, videos. Okay, this is nice. Uh, cooking a nice dumb biryani. Okay, I am not exactly sure how that can be connected to a website. Uh, but yes, I, I am sure we all love biryani. Um, cartoons and rhymes, web pages. Perfect. So there is a common uh, connection in what most of you are saying, which is that a website is simply put very simply put content on the internet right or if i can rephrase information on the internet i don't need to explain this further right? a website can simply be information on the internet right um and um if it is a good website then it is information about a particular topic or a particular uh, domain for example right so generally we don't find one website which is everything which has everything right it could be either about the company or a particular application like say LinkedIn or YouTube, um, or it could be, you know, something specific. So a website is generally content or information on the internet. A good website is uh, a content or information about a particular thing or a particular topic, right? Perfect. So that is how you can explain what a website is. Now, uh, naturally from that definition, what we can infer is web development, the term that we use, you know, web development um, is of course, developing or creating a website or building a website, right? So this is something that we're going to focus on for the rest of the course. We are going to build web applications um, using the Moon stack, right? Uh, the next term that we basically hear is this term called web design, right? So the next question for you is what is web design? And, um, you know, more importantly, are web development and web design the same thing? So do you think web development and web design are the same thing? Um, if yes, okay. Uh, if no, what is the difference between them? So what is web design? What is web development? How are they different from each other? Uh, okay, most of you say no, they are not the same thing, which is good. Of course, the, there is a reason why there are two different terms. They are obviously not the same thing. Web design and web development are very different things. Um, but what is the difference between them? What is web design or rather what is, you know, web development? How are they different? Okay, uh, so uh, Hari has got this right. It says UI UX is designing, which is absolutely on point. Uh, when we talk about web design, we basically mean the UI UX of it. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But um, yes, design is the interface. Um, Design is UI, development is UX, not exactly true. Um, UX is also part of design. Development is a completely different thing altogether. Um, okay, so design means how website will look like and development means we are going to upgrade and update of the site, okay? Um, perfect, yes. So what most of you are saying is that um, design is the um, user interface part or what we see on the screen rather. And development is the um, code that we write, which is correct, right? So again, we have two terms, web design and web development. Uh, when we say web design, we are talking about the visual layout or the visual aspect, right? For example, what colors to use in the website, which font should we use, uh, the icon design, the logo design, uh, you know, all of that part. 
um, images, content, what to put, all of those things uh, basically, you know, are um, design, right? And then development is when we take that and we put it into a code. So all the code that we write, that is basically your development. So first we design the website, which is the job role of a UI UX designer, um, right? And then we develop them, which is a job role of a full stack developer. So as a full stack developer, you will be given the design and you are required to code it out. That's the basic idea, right? So hopefully the term or the differences are clear, right? Um, so again, um, Yes. So a web designer is a graphic artist, right? They are responsible for designing the layout, the usability, the visual appearance, like colors to use, fonts to use, icons, images, what content will go. All of that is a part of the design. On the other end, a web developer is somebody who is responsible for converting this design into a functional website by writing the code, right? So again, we'll discuss these languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, some frameworks as well. So our focus obviously is going to be on the development part. This um, program or this internship is not focused on design. This internship is focused on development, right? So yes, that is uh, the basic difference between the two. Uh, the next term, the next question and probably the final question for you for this part is front end and back end, right? I'm sure you have heard of these terms of front end development, back end development. So what is the difference between the two? What is front end development? What is back end development? What is the difference between the two? So again, you can put your answers in the chat and we'll quickly explore those terms and jump to the next part. Garnish versus cooking. Nice. Okay. Um, front end is interface and back end is about process. Front end use user interface, okay, and server side mechanism, okay. So remember, we are explaining this to a five year old, right? We they don't know what a server is, they don't know what process is. So we have to be very simple in our definitions. Uh, okay, front end developer creates websites and application using web languages such as HTML, CSS that allow users to access and interact with the site. Okay, that is on point. Um, front end is client side and back end is server again on point. Okay, great. Yes. So again, uh, most of you have got the difference exactly right. So here are two images that probably explain this difference the best. So in my, my experience of training, these are the two most accurate images I have found, uh, over time that explain the difference. So front end basically is everything that you can see on the screen. Or to be more precise, it is everything that you can interact with on the screen, right? So everything that you can see or interact with on the screen, that is front end. And everything that happens behind the scenes, uh, all the logic, all the functionality, all the database aspects, all of these things are basically your backend, right? So backend usually involves two parts. You have the logic and the database and front end is all the um, you know, um, all the parts of the screen which are visible or can be interacted with. So one thing that you have to understand here very clearly is front end is not web design. Front end is also development, right? So a lot of people confuse the terms web design and front end are very different things. Web design is what generates the wireframe for the application. Front end is coding the UI, right? Or coding the visual parts of the website. And backend is coding the functionality and the database parts of the website, right? So it is very important to understand these terms, right? Hopefully these terms are all, uh, you know, very clear and you have understood the terms frontend and backend. Perfect. Then we come down to the last term that we have, which is stack. So now that we know what frontend is, now that we know what backend is, what exactly is a stack, right? So again, this is a traditional hamburger image, which we always use to explain what a stack is. And um, the full stack that we generally use, the term full stack refers to a bunch of technologies or a set of technologies that are put together to create an application, right? So a stack basically refers to a collection of technologies that we use together in order to build a website. So a stack generally contains four things, right? A stack generally contains four things. Um, there is front end, there is back end, there is database, 
and there is some sort of a deployment mechanism right so if you see the screen um, you will understand the top layer here if you see this um, burger so the top part here this entire visibility this is your um, front end right so here we have so many options available but for now i'm just generally talking about front end right so front end includes html css javascript uh, and then of course you know we have um, all the different libraries like bootstrap and frameworks like react angular etc which we'll talk more about as well but that is the front end part then here is your um, you know the mid mid part this is api and this is what we can um, think of like a waiter in a restaurant right so let's say that you go to a restaurant you sit on um, you sit on a table and you you know you, the waiter will come to you with the menu and like what do you want to eat and then you will tell the waiter what you want the waiter will go to the kitchen convey your order then the kitchen is your back end which is this part right so the kitchen will take the ingredients it will prepare the dish for you and again give it back to the waiter the waiter will take the dish and bring it back to you so this interaction that is happening between the front end and the back end happens through the concept of what we call an api right so these are all examples of apis rest api soap web sockets these are all examples of apis but yes we will cover rest apis in our curriculum but that is what we call an api api is an application programming interface right so this is what um, you know the next part of the burger is now the difference between back end and database generally so when we say back end we are talking about the functionality or the logic of the application and the database is where we are talking about storing retrieving updating deleting data so in a kitchen example uh, what we could consider this as back end is cooking and database are your ingredients right so the stock the inventory the ingredients that you have available in the kitchen that is your database and the actual process of cooking taking these ingredients and making the dish that can be com compared to back end so i hope that difference is very clear a database are the data items or inventory that you have and back end generally refers to the process or the logic of the application which usually requires some input from the user something from the database we process it and give it back to the user that is how the whole setup works right and the final layer that you see here is basically your deployment so this is where we take what we have built and we put it out right so for example um, you know let's say amazon uh, web services that is aws uh, if you are making an app for the android uh, let's say android phones you will put it on the google play store if the application is meant for an iphone you will put it on the apple app store uh, if the application is meant for the web then we'll put it on the um, on any of these platforms and make it available in the form of a link or a url that you can visit right so that is a stack a stack generally means a collection of technologies put together there are four primary things we have front end back end database and some deployment platform these things together make up a stack right now the stack that we are going to focus on in our curriculum in the next couple of um, you know weeks is the mon stack right so when we talk about the mon stack we basically have four uh, major frameworks that are available here the first m here stands for mongodb right mongodb is a database which we'll cover uh, towards the end of the uh, training so that's usually the last thing that we cover right then we have um your express express and node they make up our back end right so again a stack contains four parts we have front end back end database and deployment some deployment platform right so we are going to focus on the data on the mon stack wherein the database is mongodb right then the uh, e stands for express express is our server or our uh, back end right express and node make up our back end and react is our front end for deployment we'll again talk about it later when we get to the deployment part i'll tell you how to deploy this we have a lot of options available but yes we are going to focus on the mon stack so mongodb the database express and node make up our back end and react makes up our front end one more thing or one more standard interview question rather you know that we get asked a lot again uh, you can probably try to answer this i'll first tell you the question you can try to answer this in the chat right so the question is when it comes to the front end web development or when we come to the front end of a website we only have three languages we have html we have css we have javascript right 
Uh, on the other hand, when we talk about the backend development, we have so many choices. Theoretically speaking, any programming language can be used for backend, right? All the way from C, C++ to Java, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, any programming language can be used for the backend. Why? The question is why? Why do we only have three options for front end, but so many options for back end? You can take a guess, put your answers in the chat. I'll clear this out and then we'll move to the next part. Again, this is a very common interview question that is asked. Why is this? Why do we have only three choices for front end, but we can use anything for the back end? So any, any thoughts on this, you can put in the chat and then um, we'll discuss the correct answer. Uh, we don't have four kinds of stacks, um, um, Jangam. So the stacks, a stack refers to one set of technologies. There are four parts to a stack. We don't have four types of stacks. There are four components or four parts to a stack. Frontend, backend, database, and deployment, some sort of deployment. So those are the four um, parts of a stack. We don't have four types of stacks. We use the term MUN for these technologies, but a stack in general, has four components, front-end, back-end, database, and deployment. Um, because the front-end tools are static, uh, browser only supports JavaScript. Okay, uh, there, because in there we only have design options, front-ends are markup languages and styling. Um, Right. Okay. So a lot of you have um, given answers, but most of them are not exactly correct. There is one answer which is exactly right, which is that uh, the browser only supports JavaScript. Right? That is um, the perfect answer for this. Not just JavaScript, but basically for front end, the restriction or the... Okay, let me tell you the question again. I think there is some confusion over there. So the question was that when we talk about front end web development, we only have three programming languages. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? Again, we'll talk about the purposes of these languages later, but we only have three languages available, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. No matter what front end you want to make, if you're using Angular, React, Vue, any, any programming, um, any framework or anything that you use when creating front end, there are only three options that we have, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. On the other hand, when we talk about back end, we have so many options. Right. For backend, we have so many options. Theoretically speaking, any programming language can be used for backend. So why is this? That was the question. Why do we only have limited options for the front end? And why do we have so many options for the backend? So the correct answer here, the exact response is that when we talk about front end or when we talk about a browser, a browser only supports these three languages. Right, the browser only understands HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It does not understand any other language. So, whenever you want to talk to a browser, you have to use these three languages. That is the only option. Unless you are willing to create a brand new browser for your brand new language, which nobody is going to do. Right, because creating a browser may be simple, but getting everybody to use that browser, that is going to be a challenge, right? So that is why in it, in front end, we only have three choices, HTML for the content, CSS for styling and JavaScript for the front end logic, right? That's the only, uh, those are the only three things that we have. Uh, on the other hand, in terms of the backend, we can use any programming language because a server which runs our backend is like our own laptop. Right. So just like in our laptop, we can write code in any language by installing the corresponding tools in the exact same way. When we talk about the server, uh, it can, con it can have anything, right? It can have anything, um, basically. So again, that is the reason why backend, um, can be on any language or backend can be written in any language, but on the other hand, front end is limited because of the browser restrictions, right? Um, so yes, um, there's a good question. Why can't browser be developed uh, with other options? Because of the fact that browser right now only speaks three languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So if you want to create a new language, you have to create a new browser also. 
which understands your new language right which is a difficult task to do because getting everybody to learn that new language or you know getting everybody to use that browser that is going to be a big challenge which is why we are limited to three options right perfect now before we take the first round of questions for today um i just want to quickly talk about one more thing which are components of a website right so again here's a quick question for you we visit websites every day right we visit at least a dozen different websites if not more uh, on a daily basis now the question is what are the most common components that make up a website because if we see a website right there are four things rather or three things uh, in a very simple sense Right, that are common no matter what the website is about right it, they are universal global things available on every website so we just want to generalize that in a way that we get a general structure of a website so uh, the first question for you here is what is the first thing that you see on the website usually at the top what is that called what are the first couple of things that we see uh perfect so we have nav bar we have search bar search bar is not there on every website nav bar is there on every website fair enough we have the logo of the website good uh we have the menu nav bar same thing okay um and yes so the correct term here is header right most of you have also said um, you know some of you have also written header and that is the correct term uh, here header right so header makes up the first part of the page and this is what that looks like so these are some screenshots from my own projects that i have made over the past couple of years right and uh, over here obviously the header is everything that we see before we scroll down right so the exact definition or the correct definition of a header is everything that is visible on the screen before we scroll down that is what makes up the header of a website right so these are four examples of headers and this is everything visible before we scroll right so generally again we have something like a logo of the company as you can see it's there on every page right this is the third one this is the fourth one then we typically have a menu so this is a menu this is a menu again we have menu here we have a menu here right uh, then we usually have something like a hero image which is basically your header image like this right so something like this and then we have another very important thing that in marketing terms we call cta does anybody know the full form of this term cta what is the term cta stand for it's a marketing term it's not a technical term but still if anybody knows probably you can share call to action perfect right great so you guys are already aware of these things perfect so call to action is basically what task uh, or what is the primary task that the user can perform it is very important it is crucial that our header contains a call to action right so again if you see here there are call to actions everywhere here are two buttons which are call to actions uh, browse products is the cta here browser portfolio is the cta here and contact us that is the cta here right so call to action again is a very important part of the header without which a user will never know what they can do on the website so practically speaking a header should basically be able to um, tell the user exactly what they can do on the website right exactly what you can do on the website should be clear um, from the header itself right a cta is not a prompt uh, but yes it is basically a task that the user can perform where they should be clicking on primarily when they see your page that is your cta uh, perfect now the next question is what is the last thing on a page what are some of the uh, some of the items that we find on the end of a page uh, the footer is fine the term footer is fine but what are the contents of footer what do we usually find in the footer um contact okay links fair enough copyright information perfect that is what i was looking for so if the footer contains nothing else it will at least contain copyright right if there is even if there is nothing else in the footer it will at least contain copyright information right so again here are a few examples of footers from these same projects that i have just shown you so as you can see there are different types of footers right um, this footer is actually a very big one which contains a quick intro to the company social media links there is 
terms and conditions privacy policy and then the copyright stuff at the end right then there is another footer here which contains a form for getting in touch then here's just uh, an email and copyright so footer can be as simple as what you see here with just some contact info and copyright or as complicated as the other two options that you see here depending on what we want to build right so depending on the project that we're talking about uh, we usually have some or all of these options again depends on the requirement right uh, and finally the next part or the rest of the page is what i like to call the main content this is everything that is between the header and the footer right so if we are to arrive at a general conclusion for a web page it is usually header plus main content plus footer these three components or these three things make up a web page right header at the top then the rest of the main content and then the rest of the then the footer basically right so this is what we have in terms of the main content of the page right so this is how we can generalize the layout of a website header main content footer three simple things uh, no matter what website you create no matter what web page you visit you will see 99% of the times you will see this format or this uh, pattern being followed of course there are some exceptions i'll show them to you in the next session there are some really crazy websites out there we'll see some of those in the next one uh, but yes so that is what we have in terms of the general layout right so now before moving to the next part of the session uh, let's take a couple of quick questions over here so if you have any doubts or questions please put them in the chat now so that i can quickly look at them and answer them and then we'll move to the next part uh, there were two questions two three questions that uh, came in between let me just see if i can find them and i will just answer them quickly um, and yes if there are more questions you can just put them in the chat so we have five to ten minutes for these questions i'll try to answer as much as i can but yes um Okay, so the first question says the task associated with creating, um, maintaining and websites and web development application. Uh, okay, I don't, I don't understand the question clearly. Uh, the task associated with creating, um, maintaining websites and web development application. Yes, I think that's backend. So yes, uh, the answer or basically that part is called backend. So everything that we can see or interact with, that is the front end. Uh, everything that we cannot see or cannot interact with the logic functionality database stuff happening behind the scenes is the back end of the website okay uh, moving to the next question quickly okay um so which can be seen by users but back end cannot be seen yes again so front end can be seen by the user back end cannot be seen uh, these are not exactly questions okay let's see if we have some questions um, yes, so we will talk about which languages to cover um, towards the end of the session today. I'll give you everything that we'll cover, all the technologies, everything that's coming up at the end of the session, right? And okay, um, will you guide us how to do projects based on this? Yes. So like I said, um, uh, Sashi, um, we are going to spend a couple of, we are going to make a couple of projects within the sessions. These will be mini projects like a restaurant menu you know, or something like that, which are mini projects by applying these concepts. And then, of course, there are a lot of other activities and, you know, other projects that you will be making on your own. And of course, there are people to help you out with those as well. So, yes, I will definitely be guiding you uh, as to how to make projects. And then, of course, the bigger, um, you know, the capstone project is also something that we'll discuss after we have learned a couple of things. Then we'll talk about what you're going to build as a capstone project. Um, sure, Harsha, I, I can, I think we can get the slides uploaded on the LMS. If that is possible, I'll definitely get that done. Um, it is one stack that we are covering, right? So, um, we are not going to cover Java based full stack. Uh, we are going to cover Mon stack, which is JavaScript based uh, full stack. The primary reason for this is that JavaScript is a language which is common for front end and back end. So if you are to learn a Java full stack, then you need to learn JavaScript also for front end and then Java again for backend. So that adds a new language to learn, uh, which is not something that we have, you know, a lot of time for. So it makes sense to learn one technology which can be used in both front end and backend. Uh, plus most of the job roles now require JavaScript related, um, you know, frameworks and Java related frameworks are only used in some specific type of applications where we have enterprise level or 
very secure applications like banking and stuff like that. That is where we use Java. But mostly 70-75% uh, of the other systems that we use are all built with JavaScript based um, technologies. So we are going to focus on one stack, which is Mongo, Express, React and Node with JavaScript. Um, yes. So again, uh, Karthik, uh, as of today, right, every single company, no matter uh, who they are, how big or small they are, the first thing that they are expected to have is a website. So naturally, there is a huge demand for web development. Every every new product launch, every offer, everything that the company does is literally put on the website. So yes, there is a huge demand as well. And again, in the in the near future also, we don't see that changing anytime soon. It could just happen that we might get some additional tools where we um, have to probably write less code and maybe use those tools. But the developer's demand is not going anywhere. That is still there because there needs to be somebody who can use the tool, right? So maybe the job role might shift a little, but the, the, necess the necessity for developers uh, is not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, how does CTA help to make header most useful? So the idea behind CTA or call to action is that uh, if you land on a website, right, uh, you should be able to see um, what the website contains or what you can do on the website in the header itself. That is what CTA tells you. So CTA will tell you that you can buy a product or you can pre-book this or you can fill a form to sign up. So that CTA is what tells you what you can do on the website as soon as it opens up. That is why CTA makes header uh, most useful. What about WordPress? So WordPress is what we call, um, you know, a no code platform, uh, which is basically a drag and drop website builder. There are a lot of other options available out there. But the fundamental problem with all of these platforms is customizability, right? If you want to use WordPress or any other platform, they will give you a template and you have to stick to that template. You can't add anything custom. You can't customize it for your requirements. You cannot design it for your business. You have to pick a theme that is available and stick to the theme, which is why a lot of companies don't use uh, those platforms. So yes, uh, there are platforms out there, but there is a fundamental problem, which is most companies want to stand out, differentiate them, you know, in terms of branding and other things, uh, which these tools um, restrict to a lot of extent, which is why we don't, um, you know, see that being used a lot in the industry. Uh, individual developers use them for creating portfolios, startups use them probably to get started. But over time, in the longer run, every company wants to have custom code, um, you know, because they have control over it and they can decide how it looks and works overall. Um, so, yes, like I said, when we are going to talk about uh, technologies, uh, it I'll talk to you about that in the end. And the sessions are on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Those are the three sessions for full stack. In addition to this, uh, I'm not sure if you have other sessions, but the team will inform you about those. Um, you know, you have um, other things as well. But for now, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 to 7.30 is when we'll have full stack sessions. Uh, okay, so I think I will continue. We'll continue with the topic now and we'll come back to the questions uh, again towards the end. There are a couple of things that I missed out. I'll come back to this later. Um, there is one, one final part that we have to quickly discuss, which are the steps um, you know, that we need to follow um, for designing or developing a website. And I like to call this part the journey of a website. And um, this is something again that I've realized a lot over time, you know, uh, which is, uh, so yes, I think there is one question which I should answer. Like I said in the very beginning and like, you know, it might have been also clear with the session. We are talking about everything from the very basics, right? We literally started by what is a website. Um, so technically speaking, you don't need any knowledge right, to come to this session or take this training. Uh, it is as I am assuming that you have no idea what web development is. You are not from a technical background, basically not from a CSC IT department uh, or any other technical background for that matter. So yes, anybody and everybody can take up this training. We'll cover everything from scratch. So don't worry about that, right? Um, like I said, we started by what is a website. That is the simplest possible thing to discuss. Right? We did not start coding yet because I wanted to take one session to talk about all of these things. And then we'll start uh, with the development from the next one. So yes, uh, quickly coming back to the point here, right? Is that um, one of the things that I realized over time that a lot of people struggle with, and I also struggle with this in the very beginning, 
right was that um, i knew okay i can learn programming languages i can learn the technologies but um, how do you go about this right what is the industry standard process uh, when it comes to web development what is the industry process how do things work over there that is something that nobody um, you know talks about or at least nobody told me about in the beginning so that is why i always start with the process first and then we basically break this down step by step and understand you know how to follow or go through this entire journey of creating a website or creating an application but what a lot of people struggle with is that they don't know what is the process to follow and that is what we'll discuss first so it's a very simple process and we'll expand on this as and when we progress in the course uh, but the idea here is that the first thing to do naturally obviously uh, is to figure out what needs to be built right so the first step uh, the technical term for this is called requirements engineering when i was doing my mtech i had an entire course on this uh, we had a course called requirements engineering and it was the dumbest the the most stupid course that i thought was there in the entire curriculum uh, but um, later on i realized how important it was after i started you know building projects i realized that this is probably one of the most important things to discuss and this particular process of requirements engineering simply means uh, figure out what needs to be built and then um, you know uh, just note it down in a very simple sense so we make a list of all the features all the functionality whatever is required that is where the term comes from so whatever is required on the website is called a requirement right for example if the user needs to be able to sign up that's a requirement if the user needs to be able to log in that's a requirement if the user needs to be able to search for a product place an order track an order all of these are requirements so of course the first step is to just design um, this uh, or just note this down which is what requirements engineering is we'll talk about this again in a lot more detail later uh, for now i just want to give you a quick idea of the entire process so that is step 1 uh, we figure out what needs to be built once that is done then we move to step 2 which is where we have wireframing right so wireframing is basically your ui ux so the entire part of ui ux the entire department of ui ux that is focusing on the wireframing step so this is where we figure out the colors to use the fonts to use all of these things that is wireframing then the next thing that we have is development so once we design this um, right then we are going to go ahead and develop them so development is writing the code um, for the um, design right so whatever was designed we are going to develop that by using the languages that we'll cover in the course or we'll cover in this program and we'll basically write the code once the code is written then we move to testing so naturally when the uh, code is ready before we can put it out to the user we make um, we do test testing so we make sure it works as expected we make sure everything is good and then we go to uh, the deployment so naturally as you can see from this image on the screen right uh, again it took me a lot of time to come up with all of these memes and images for these concepts hopefully uh, they are able to explain them to you better uh, but yes so one of the primary challenges with web development specifically you know is the fact that we have all sorts of devices on which a website can be opened right all the way from a, a, a smart watch something like this to a huge 75 inch television we can open websites on every device uh, so there is really no categorization there are so many options so that poses a big challenge both for development also and for testing also uh, while developing also we have to make sure that we make something that works on all devices and the same thing is true for testing as well but when the testing is completed then we move to deployment uh, if you're a star wars person you will understand this the best uh, this meme the best if not go check out star wars whenever you can uh, but yes so deployment is taking whatever we have in the system or whatever we have built and putting it out to the user so again if it's a mobile application deployment would mean putting it on the play store app store um, if it's a website it would mean putting it on the internet getting a url you know giving links to people to access it that is your deployment and then we have the final step which is maintenance so maintenance is something that a lot of companies have to do uh, because they keep updating the website every few days or every few weeks 
right so there are new offers new season sales new products being launched uh, new interfaces being designed there are continuous updates going on and all of this handling is called maintenance of a website right so this is basically everything that we have in terms of the process there are six simple steps uh, requirements engineering figure out what you want to build wireframing design that um, right then go to um, development where we have um, you know the code being written then four we have testing testing is where we um, test it out then we have deployment which is step 5 De deployment is where we put it out there basically get it in the hands of the user and then of course step 6 is maintenance which is the final step um, that we have over here right perfect so now again um, i'll quickly uh, also walk you through the steps or tools that you need to install and then we'll take one final round of questions uh, i think before we wrap up for today so the tools that we need here are again you will be given a uh, uh, you will be provided with a document which will have all the installation instructions here uh, on the LMS. But still, I just want to quickly tell you the tools you are going to need so that you can have them set up for the next session onwards, right? So again, the steps that we have, number one, requirements engineering, then wireframing, then development, then testing, then main, um, deployment and maintenance. These are the six steps right, that we have. Uh, yes. So quickly moving to the tools that we need. Now, the first thing that you have to understand is that we cannot build a website on a mobile phone, right? There are, there are some versions, some tools available, but they are not good enough, right? So this is something that you have to understand. If you want to build a website, it cannot be done on a mobile phone at this point of time, because we need really powerful tools. Right? And we also want to be able to write a lot of code, which is not possible with a small keyboard on the phone. So um, ideally, the best case scenario is that you are expected to have a laptop or use your university labs, whatever the case is, uh, in order to build websites. Right. So that is the first thing. Uh, we cannot build, again, I'm stressing on this, uh, we cannot build a website on a mobile phone. You have to have a laptop or a computer, access to a laptop or a computer somehow. Right? Either you have it, best case, or you can use your um, college labs. Right, That is the second option. So yes, um, now quickly I'll tell you the tools that we need. The first tool that we need is VS Code. Uh, it's called Visual Studio Code. This is the place where we write all the code. It's called an IDE, which is an integrated development environment. Again, we'll, we'll use this a lot pretty much for the entire code. We'll use this tool only. Right. Then the next thing, of course, we need is Google Chrome. Um, Google Chrome is where we, of course, test our code. Now, there are a lot of browsers out there, but the reason why we are going to use Google Chrome is because they provide something called Chrome Developer Tools, right? which is uh, which are the best tools available on any browser. So Firefox does not have as good enough tools. Safari does not have as good enough tools. So that is why a Google Chrome is recommended, at least for development. If you use any other browser, you can use that for your uh, daily use. But please install Google Chrome, right? Um, please install Google Chrome for your um, testing of the code, right? Then the next thing is Node. Uh, Node.js is basically uh, going to be, right, um, something that we are going to use and uh, for the backend. So this is our server creation, our backend setup. All of that will happen with Node. Then we have MongoDB. Uh, MongoDB is our database, right? Then we have Git and GitHub. These are called version control tools. So Git is going to help us keep a track of the changes we make, release new versions of the code, all of that. And GitHub is what we will use to share code with each other. So whatever code I cover in the session, I will give you access to that on GitHub. Whatever assignments, activities, tasks you will complete, you will submit them through GitHub. Right. So GitHub is going to be our code sharing platform. Uh, these are the six tools that we need for the entire course, right? So I'm going to tell you more about this as in when we need them. But as of now, like I said, you will be given a document which has installation instructions for these six tools. So there are steps written step by step, how to install everything. Please make sure before the next session, we have the tools installed, right? Is that clear? Everybody should have these six tools installed on your system before the next session yes okay just put a okay or a yes in the chat so i know this is clear 
right perfect so yes that is what we we have in terms of the tools that we uh, require right and now um, you know quickly coming to what is coming up in the rest of the um, process so janvi like i said you will be given a document on the lms which will contain step by step instructions for installing everything please make sure you do this before the next session we are going to start using these tools immediately from the next session onwards right so please refer to the document and get this done perfect uh, now coming up in, in the entire program or the next couple of sessions the technologies that we are focusing on are as follows so we have html css javascript for our front end um, so html helps us add content um, css is for styling javascript is for front end logic then we'll cover react js which is our framework for front end then we'll go to back end we'll discuss api creation with node js and express js then we'll go to mongodb we'll talk about databases and finally we'll create an entire project if you have never heard of any of these terms don't worry uh, you are not expected to know anything about any of this i'm just putting this out for people who are curious because there were a lot of questions about what are we going to learn what is the stack so this is what we have these are all the technologies that we're going to cover um, right in the next um, couple of so for the rest of the course this is going to be our uh, agenda right these are the technologies these are the languages these are the frameworks you can take a screenshot of this if you want to uh, and this is everything that we're going to learn in this particular training right uh, perfect. So that is basically what I wanted to cover before moving to the next round of questions now. So this is the final round of questions for today's session. I think we are almost uh, reaching the closing time. We also had a quick poll, which was a quick quiz for you guys. Um, yeah, let's take a quick round of questions and then we can probably take the poll as well. Uh, yes. So regarding the WhatsApp groups and any of those things, um, you will be contacted. So if the group is full, you will get an email with a new link. Don't worry about that. But we are still um, in the process of onboarding all of you. So give us another, um, you know, a few days, um, two, three days probably to get that all sorted. We are working on it. So in case there is a group issue, not able to join, group is full. Don't worry, you will get an email uh, with the um, with the new links and you will probably join, you can join from there. Um, yes. So the session timings, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 PM to 7 30 PM every week, right? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 to 7 30. So make sure you are available. Make sure there is nothing else, um, you know, for this slot, you don't have anything else in this duration so that you can attend the session and, you know, um, basically attend it live. Um, the internship will mostly run till March, um, right, um, Roshan. Um, so we have about 25 sessions uh, for full stack. So yes, that will mostly be, uh, you know, so three sessions a week, you can calculate it about two, two and a half months. Uh, and then you have the project and also probably four months is the ideal duration. But within that full stack will be about 25 or so sessions. Uh, yes, so Nitin, like I said, I'll tell you about version control, Git, GitHub, all of those things as and when we need them. So for now, just install them without worrying about it too much. And I'll tell you everything that you need to know when we start using them. Right. Um, yes. So the difference between database and backend is very simple. Database is where you store the data and backend is where you perform the logic. So like I said, if you think of a kitchen, um, your database is the inventory, the stock that you have. Right? You will have, you know, all your masalas, your vegetables, your fruits. That is the database. The process of cooking, actually cooking the food, that is backend. So using those ingredients to create a dish, that process is backend. The ingredients themselves can be considered as data or database. So that is the difference. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so again, I will not repeat this again, but we have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 to 7.30. So roughly 4.5 hours of live sessions every week um, from now, right? So that's the last time I am answering that. But yes, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 to 7.30 is when we have the live sessions. Um, so again, for installations, you will be getting the document on the LMS. I hope you all have access to the LMS. 
um, you were told to create the accounts also. Hopefully you have done that. So there you will get a document. It's called installation instructions. Uh, please follow those instructions to uh, get the tools and just keep it ready before the next session. Uh, thank you. Uh, like uh, I will uh, tell them how to create their accounts in their limits and their right okay, sure. So uh, hi, okay. everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm Raghuram uh, from Blackbooks. I'm working as a product manager. So, you know, about the LMS way to access and, you know, uh, how to, uh, how we are capturing the attendance, I'll be telling you. First, let me share my screen. So, let's start. Okay. So, so you know, hope everyone is checking your emails and WhatsApps, right? So, you'll be receiving this kind of links uh, in, in, my, in my URL I have highlighted, right? So, uh, please click that link every day. So it automatically captures your attendance and it redirects to the meet link. So that's how we are capturing the attendance. So I, I, I hope uh, I have answered the first question. The second question is uh, the feedback form. The feedback form is simple. Uh, it, uh, you know, have to, uh, I have, I'm posting the feedback form here. So just hear me out and then fill out the form later. Okay. So uh, here we have many questions out there. So what is the BBID? Where can you find? Uh, you, uh, the registration is nothing but your college registration number uh, and grade D uh, instructor. And what did you learn from the today's sessions? As Anuradha ma'am said, that uh, we will be giving out the uh, uh, what the manual that you write, you write each day, the GD basically, that you'll be getting once uh, you write it here. We're capturing your BBIDs. Based on that, we will give out the form once the entire live sessions are done. Okay, so a way to find my BBID. So it's simple. So I'm just uh, giving out the link to find your BBID. Okay, so just enter your email. Okay, once you enter your email and click on submit, your BBID will be displayed here. Using that BBID, you can enter the form. Okay, and not only that, <laughs> coming, to the, coming back to the live sessions, why we are organizing the live sessions is to, to make you understand from this from the scratch, okay, to make this uh, in, internships productive, and to make you and to make the under, to make you uh, understand the concepts into deeper, and to make this interactive. So make use of this, okay. And coming uh, coming back to the LMS platform. So to register in the LMS platform, hope some of you knowing the tap tap platform. So, uh, and some may have registered also. If you have, if you have registered, it's fine. So I'll tell you how to register. So uh, go to taptap.blackbush.me. I'm posting this link also in the chat. Okay. So, uh, uh, so and where you can click on register now. Okay. Where you, where you need to enter your full name, email ID, phone number, and college code. Don't worry about the college code. Don't worry about the college code. So the college codes uh, with uh, is shared in respect of your uh, WhatsApp groups. And also I'll be displaying at the end. Please be patient. Once you enroll on this, click on sign up in Google. It automatically uh, gets you in. So otherwise, uh, when you're signing it, uh, when you're signing normally, you can sign in off easily and uh, you can, you can uh, explore the platform. So let's say uh, it not only gives you uh, to access the internships, you can also create your profiles, uh, student profile. Uh, you can just and create and you can also generate and resume in four different formats. That's how we can do. You can uh, go to my dashboard where you can explore things. Okay. So as as uh, we have said that you'll be having day-wise tests. So where can you access the day-wise tests? The team will be sharing the hackathon links. So let's say uh, the hackathon link is, uh, let me go to practice and uh, so, so let's say hackathon ID is 340. Click on start now. Click on start now. Once you click on start now, the questions will be displayed here. Okay, it is a coding question. It can be in MCQs also. Once you click on everything, don't click on end round. If you click on end round, this uh, test will be automatically submitted. So once you complete everything, then click on end round. Okay, then if you click it, it get automatically saved. Okay, so that's about the LMS platform. For each one of you, a particular projects has be, will be assigned based on your selection. 
once that is being done we will share out uh, the hackathon links where you can manage everything and the installation manuals all will be shared shortly okay so regarding the bb ids so uh, the bb ids link where where to find the bb id uh, i'm just posting in the chat okay just find out okay find out the bb id by entering your registered email id okay uh, so my let's say my email id is this okay so i'm going back and i'm just entering and so whatever click on submit your bb id will be displayed here Copy paste the BBID and paste it out here. Enter the registration number, everything, and click on submit. The form get automatically captured. And uh, about this link, please check your and BBID is also not mandatory. Uh, if you have it, find out your BBID. It's for you for the uh, it's it's for your future reference as well. So that's it for the day. So I'm posting the feedback link again. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll. So I'm telling a lot of time. It's fine. So, so yeah, coming to the uh, attendance form. So attendance form. You'll be getting to your email like a uh, like click here to join the meet link. If you click on that, uh, it, it is kind of like this, which you'll be receiving to your WhatsApp and as well as to your email. Find out to your email, find a, uh, find the email which has been sent to you. Click on the link. It automatically, uh, uh, it, it once you click on that particular link, it captures your attendance. That is step one. Okay. So is everyone clear with this? Asha is uh, is it okay? BBID link, BBID link. Okay, I'll send the BBID link. Right, just a minute. So find your BBID link there. Okay, um, yeah, I'm just pasting again, again, again. Okay, so don't worry, I I'll send out. Uh, so yeah, so I bought the attendance process. So uh, every day you will uh, the team will be sending out. Uh, the WhatsApp messages and as well as the emails regarding the session where you can find the join meet link, join the session link. Once you click on the session, uh, 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 one session, once you click on the button, your attendance will be automatically recorded. Okay. Uh, and few people didn't get the session mail. Don't worry. Our team will send the session mails and as well as the attendances. Don't worry. Uh, as the enrollments are, uh, are a bit slow, that's why we have, uh, it's if, if it is late, that's why we haven't shared it. So, uh, BBID link, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So, don't worry if you are not added to a WhatsApp group, the team will soon add it to you. Okay, the LMS link also, wait, I'm just sharing to you. Uh, I think you're not sharing it in the public thing, uh, just uh, because I also can't see the links that you're putting out. Sorry, sorry. So yeah, this is the, no, I, I think uh yeah yeah. So yeah. Thank you. This, this, this is the feedback form link. Feedback form link. PVID link. So that's it for the day. Thank you. Uh, attendance link. Attendance link is being shared to your uh, email ID. Please check out. So I'm sharing the LMS one more time. Just a minute. It is mandatory to fill the fact feedback form as well as to capture the attendance. Please uh, find the email, mm -hmm. click on that. It mm -hmm. automatically records and please fill the feedback form as well. It is mandatory. Says email not formed. 
no, don't uh, don't worry achita you will be added to the whatsapp group soon uh, and then you can find out again tomorrow i think you have enrolled uh, after 5 so that's why it is saying so yeah uh, i'll just send out one more time it's the bb id link ha ah, don't worry don't worry lakshmi you will be added to the group so uh, if you are not added to the group or if you are unable to find the whatsapp group you will be added to the group and as well as your bb id will be uh, posted in the whatsapp group don't worry you can you can find by tomorrow so we can we can also have one more session on tap tap tomorrow where uh, where i can guide you with end to end okay don't worry lms lms also Uh, dear students don't worry your college code will be posted uh, in the group itself uh, we'll uh, will uh, attach the pdf just a minute Uh, okay so yes i think uh, all of your concerns will be addressed uh, shortly um, so don't worry about you know um, all, all of these things like um, he just said will will be added to the whatsapp groups if you haven't been added already uh, emails will again be sent for people who have not received the attendance link or anything like that uh, you will be getting emails you will be added to the whatsapp groups as well and once that is done you will get regular updates about everything over there right so don't worry about um, you know all of these processes we'll take care of those things one by one uh, i think there's one final bit left so before everybody you know drops off uh, i'm just going to launch the poll quickly um, you can just take a quick minute to fill that in and then uh, you know we can probably go ahead and wrap up so it's a simple three mcq questions that you can see on the screen now uh, just fill them in quickly and uh, yeah uh, these are simple questions based on what we have discussed and some general knowledge you don't need any um, you know external specific knowledge as such so yes let's take a minute uh, you should all be able to see the poll uh, just fill that in and then we can continue with uh, the questions if there are any any other questions Also, um, so guys, this since this is a public chat, uh, please avoid putting your phone numbers in the chat. Um, so yeah, I think some of you have started putting in your numbers. We have your numbers. We'll add you to the groups. Uh, please don't put your phone numbers in the chat.
Okay, so about fifty percent of you have completed the poll. I'll wait for another minute for the rest of you to complete, and then I'll of course tell you the answers as well. Uh, but I'll just wait for one more minute. So if you haven't filled the poll yet, quickly do that, and I'll share the answers in just a minute. Again, like I said, please avoid putting your mobile numbers on the chat in the chat uh, since it's a public chat. Uh, try to not put your phone numbers. We have your numbers. You'll be added to the groups. Don't worry. Um, don't put them in the chat. Thank you. Okay, uh, 20 seconds to go. In 20 seconds, I'll stop the poll and then uh, we can continue with the questions if there are any. Uh, okay, and done. So I'll stop the poll now. Uh, in one minute, I'll quickly tell the answers. The answer to the first question. Um, so I'll just share the results also on the screen. Uh, the answer to the first question is, of course, planning. Obviously, that's the first thing that we do. Uh, then the answer to the second question is verification. So again, most of you, 49% of you got it right. Uh, verification is making sure the data is as per the correct format, right? Um, again, so there's a difference between the terms. We'll talk about it later, validation uh, and verification. I think that was the confusion there. We'll explore them in detail later. Um, and then finally, the third uh, question was um, the, um, the correct answer here is minification. So option D was the correct answer. I think, again, um, there was some confusion between these options. But yes, so like I said, these are the very fundamental things. We'll cover all of them in detail later. So this was just a quick, um, quick check on, you know, um, what you know already. But yes, so uh, in the next couple of sessions, the poll will be more specific to what we are covering in the session. And yes, with that, I think that is more or less it from my side for today. Uh, hopefully you guys had um, a good experience and you learned something new today. Um, let's continue the discussion in the next session. And uh, yes, um, I will leave the session to Raghu, I guess, who will be helping you out with uh, other things uh, make sure that you um, fill the feedback form whenever possible if it's not working now uh, probably try again in some time i think since there are too many people there could be a problem with the server so um, you can try it out again later probably half an hour an hour later and try to fill the feedback in that is very important because uh, feedback is what will tell us you know what to do better in the session um, so yes i think the session i hope the session was good and I'll see you in the next session. So yes, um, have a great day. Uh, bye.